uh, so glad to uh, have you all come to our second Guard the Vote rally by Indivisible Ulster 19. And um, uh, we're here to make sure that people are aware that we must do something as citizens to make sure our elected officials know that we want our votes and the integrity of our voting and uh, the purity of our voting kept intact and despite anything that might be being blocked in the Senate. So uh, we're here to talk about that and encourage people to come out and do their part. Um, and today we have a couple of great speakers and then we're gonna have some more uh, of Tin Horn Uprising and a little bit of chanting even. So uh, welcome, thank you for coming out. And our first speaker is gonna be Tyrone Wilson from Harambe and uh, his group is dedicated to uh, doing outreach, educational outreach for the African American community and we are so glad to have Tyrone here to speak about the vote. How y'all feeling out here? We make some noise out here. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. This is what I'm talking about. So I, 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 I'm honored, first I'm honored to be asked to come here and speak and, and actually be a part of what you guys are doing. Um, it's very honorable, um, it's very much needed. It represents what this community is all about, the unity in the community. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really um, I'm proud to be here with you guys today. I want to talk about just a few things, and um, one of the things I have been realizing is how, um, in, in even in the African American community, there are there are talks on social media, regular conversations, where I, where where we starting to hear talks about how our votes don't matter, and when we when we start believing that our votes don't matter, we start not to care about even going to vote. And that's and, and, and it's a it's a systematic thing, you yeah. know. Is this is not you know it's not by mistake, you know. Um, our kids are, are don't even understand you know the whole purpose of voting, and that's a problem, you know. So so to to even have people who even understood what voting means to be discouraged, is a red flag. Yeah, it's a red flag. Um, um, so to so to see what's going on, just to see what's going on with our with our country, that I had to ask myself. When did we became? When did we become a country who allowed Russia to infiltrate our God-given rights? That's right. When did we become that type That's of country? Right. I can't. I, I can't. I, I can't foresee it. So, for us to to not stand up, to not say nothing, is a dishonor for everybody, white or black, who fought for the rights for people to vote. So let's 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 give a hand and applause for the people who fought for us to vote. Yeah. Let's start there. Yeah. You know. So I, I also I also want to just you know I was just going through something about you know um, it was about why you know our, our voting rights was necessary. So you got to go back to um, when we was talking about the voting rights of um, 1965. It's a landmark piece of federal legislation in the United States that prohibits racial discrimination in voting. Yeah. Racial discrimination in voting. When you look at you, so you say, how do we tie in the, the Russia aspect infiltrating, you know, American citizens' votes? All right, money cannot be more important than our livelihood. Money cannot control us. Money cannot. We cannot let Washington D.C. see money that infiltrates how we vote and what we want to be in our office that represents us. That's right. And that has to be understood through um through the United States. Period. We have, we have, we have such. I had a conversation with a um, uh, 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 youth from ranging from the ages of 14 to 18 years old, who really never understood the meaning of why we have to vote. They already have been told that it doesn't matter to vote. It goes to a machine and it doesn't go nowhere. This is what kids are understanding right now. So we have to, we have to do some work. We have some work to do. We have to, that, that future that's coming up behind us, we have to get to them. We have to make sure that they understood. This is the vote, your vote matters. Your vote is gonna control what you do in life and how you want things to look in life. So I'm not gonna be before you no more than this, but I just wanna say I'm grateful to you guys. Thank you for all you do and whatever Harambe can do, please let us know and continue to fight and we will be right there with you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Tyrone. Tyrone Wilson, thank you Tyrone for all you do. Yeah. Okay, and now we're gonna have uh, 
a friend of ours, Jeff Collins, who is part of our Indivisible Ulster 19 and Woodstock Indivisible. And he is also running for Amador's a Senate seat. And this is Jeff Collins. Well, Todd, thank you very much. So, you know, I'm here as a candidate for office, but that, that pales in comparison to what I'm really here to talk about, which is the meaning of the power of our vote and the meaning of what it means to vote. You know, as Tyrone said, we don't understand, we have to understand how important it is that our vote matters. Because our vote says that we matter. Our vote is about we as an individual have a voice, we have as, as an individual have power, we as individuals can direct what this country does and how it does it and who does it. And when that is taken away from us, when that is abridged, when that is prevented, when that is hacked by Russians, we lose that power and we lose who we are as a country, we lose who we are as a people, and we lose what we're trying to do in this country. We are founded on the belief and the strong belief that each of us, each of us has a voice and each of us has the power to make a difference. When that's taken away from us, we lose who we are, we lose this country, and we can't do that anymore. We can't lose that anymore. So we have to prevent that. We have to talk to our senators. We have to talk to our congressmen. We have to ensure that they know that we are holding them accountable for listening to us and ensuring that our voice is heard. So everyone, please protect our vote. This is not about the vote. It's about your vote and about my vote. It's the vote. It's our vote. That's what matters. That's it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Guard the vote. Guard the vote. Guard the vote. Guard the vote. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, all right. Our next speaker is uh, Kathy Nolan, who is uh, uh, one of our one of the things that came for me out of this whole Trump effect is that I learned that we have a legislature in Ulster County. <laughs> and Kathy is one of our newer members from District 22, and she's amazing. And uh, we are so lucky to have her fighting for a bunch of really good causes. So she's here to talk about voting. Thank you, Amy, and thank you, everybody. Uh, this is guarding the vote. This is coming out and showing these people that there are people who care about this in the middle of the day, in the middle of a pretty day, on a, at the end of the week. So I think of voting as um, the lifeblood of a community and a nation. And we are the red blood cells to carry the oxygen in that lifeblood. When we show up at the voting booth, we ignite our, our life in the community. And there's a lot of other things floating around in the lifeblood. You know, there may be contaminants. We have to clean that up. And the way we do that is by getting this message out through every media. Uh, we have people who are great on Facebook or Twitter talking about voting and how you're going to be doing it and how exciting it is and how important it is is so valuable going to school boards and talking with them about what are they doing in terms of getting students registered. We have to do our work at every opportunity, letters to the editor, uh, and rallies that basically show that being in a voting community is fun and energizing. So we can do all those things even if we don't have our elected officials doing their job and we can also put energy into the system to get the big bureaucracy that is our government working well to protect us even when our leadership may not be doing that. So we at Ulster County, um, we have been working on for quite a while a, uh, a resolution, a law on camp comprehensive campaign finance reform. So we're happy to be doing that kind of work. But I think the work of this this year is really going to the polls and having people understand what that can give us. If you get your lifeblood flowing to your fingers and your toes and every part of the community, then you have a healthy, well-functioning community. So thank you very much, everybody. And let's guard the vote. Yay, thank you. Thank you, Kathy, so much. Yeah. 
Okay, and now I'm very, very proud to uh, present to you <laughs> Christine Dinsmore. And Christine is a member of the Saugerties Democratic Committee, and I had the, the great pleasure of working with her on uh, the Juan Figueroa campaign. Uh, she was our communications uh, person. So Christine's going to come up and talk about guarding this vote. short one here so uh, first of all I want to thank Indivisible and I want to thank all of the activists who through the FASO Friday and now this first Friday of guarding the vote you've been out here we've been out here really keeping our eye on democracy and that's what's really important and I want to talk about a different aspect of guarding the vote Everyone here probably doesn't know or many people here don't know but next Friday 60 plus judicial de delegates will be going to Albany to pick our nominee for the New York State Supreme Court Justice. That person was supposed to be, because we, based on an agreement, she was going to be the people's choice, which is Cheryl Roberts. I want to tell you that um, there are seven districts, there are seven counties in the judicial district. And they made an agreement back in 2009 that when a county judge, a judge from a county, ended their 14 term, its 14 year term, or retired, the county that was losing that judge would pick the next judge. That was the agreement, it went well, went well. And in 2014, what happened was Albany, their, their choice, lost to a Republican woman. This year was supposed to be Columbia County, and Columbia County unanimously picked Cheryl Roberts, and Cheryl Roberts at this point is getting this grant from her because Albany wants to run someone feeling like, well, we lost in 2009, we want it now. Now, I don't know, if the Yankees lost the World Series yesterday, last year, and they didn't make it this year, would we say, but they lost last year, so let's put the Yankees in this year, whether no. it's theirs or not. A deal's a deal. A deal is a deal. Thank you. I want to tell you why Cheryl Roberts is the people's choice, and then I'm going to ask you what to do. Cheryl Roberts is the people's choice because she represents our values. She is the co-founder of the Greenberger Center for Criminal and Social Justice, which is a model for the whole United States about alternatives to incarceration for people suffering from severe mental illness. Our wonderful candidate for, for district attorney, Dave Clegg. I've heard him countlessly talk about that being a model, that is a model we should bring here. She started a, a, a non-for-profit that bonds, that does bail, bails out indigent people in Columbia County. She was an environmental attorney for 10 years. She was a judge, a town judge in Austerlitz for eight years. And she is just an incredible person, has our values. I also have gotten to know her to realize that she's a first American generation, a single mom who knows the experience of being in a supermarket as a young woman and deciding well, this is too expensive, I have to put this back on the shelf. She represents our people. Another aside, there are 18 judges in the judicial, thir the thir third judicial district. Of them, 15 are white men, and there are three women. There is one person of color, that one person of color happens to be the woman. So not only does she have great progressive values, our court needs to reflect what we look like. And I'm asking you, because most of us don't even know who our judicial delegates are. Next week they're meeting and we need to let them know you want them to vote for the people's choice, not the powerful's choice, not the, not the donors, not, not the attorneys who are going to appear in front of that court, the people's choice. And you probably don't know who your judicial delegate is because they keep that, we don't know. But I know, so please, afterwards, see me. I will give you the e my email, and I will get you all that information. Let your delegates know, and also show up next, next Friday 
in Albany at one o'clock, and I can give you that information too. So we're guarding the vote, but we're also guarding the vote for from our delegates who represent us. Gotcha. Cheryl Roberts is the choice. Thanks. Yes. Thank you, Christine. And I echo her sentiments about Cheryl. She's amazing. So in Ulster County, as, uh, as uh, Christine said, we have this opportunity this year to elect for the first time in many, many decades, a DA who has values that we believe in that is fair and just and forward looking into the future. And that's Dave Clegg. And, and I, you know, I know I'm preaching to the choir here because you're, I just know you all. <laughs> I, I wish I didn't know you because then I wouldn't be preaching to the choir. But, um, but anyway, uh, Dave needs a lot of help. This is not a slam dunk, is not a slam dunk. And the best, best, best way that you can help is by going canvassing. It's the best way. So uh, Dave is gonna talk to you a little bit about what he's doing, but also about a canvas he has going tomorrow, right? Yeah. So if you can manage to get yourselves to go out a little bit tomorrow uh, and talk about Dave, get people to know what's going on, that would be great. So Dave, come on up. Hooray, thank you so much for running. So, you know, there's an old saying that we should think globally and act locally. And it's never more true than when we talk about the vote. We should guard the vote, we should get out the vote, and we should get people to vote who aren't now registered. And all three of those things are things that we can start to do right now. Uh, I'm running for DA here in Ulster County. I'm running to transform our criminal justice system. We have a moment in time when this can be done. We've got Juan Figueroa out there at the county fair today talking about the opioid epidemic and how we can start to attract and address that. We need to do all of these things and we can do it together if we have all three parts and one of those important parts, the most powerful part, the part that can make the most difference is the district attorney's office. So let's talk about, I was thinking about Donald Trump. I don't know why that why? happened, but you know, and what's, you know, it's just so miserable. He's making our lives miserable. He's traumatizing everybody. But you know what he's really doing? He's, he's really dehumanizing people. He's dehumanizing segments of our population, the people of color, the people who are poor, the people who live in ghettos, the people who have been traumatized from one thing or another. He is dehumanizing them. And I'm, I'm just seeing right now, because Kathy Nolan called me the other day, that they're doing a, uh, a poll right now, a robocall poll. And what they're, what they're doing is they're seductively asking questions like this is a neutral poll. And then they get to Mike Cavanaugh, who's my opponent. And then they talk about Dave Clegg. And they apparently, when they get to Dave Clegg and you say something favorable, the next line is, well, would it change your mind if you knew that he was going to make families risk the safety of families in your community? Fear mongering, fear mongering, fear mongering. And what they're also doing is, I'm going to support criminals above the average person kind of concept. You know what that does again? And we've done this for too long, is we dehumanize the people in our criminal justice system. And that allows us to put them away, to lock them up, to put them in jail, and not think about them. And even when they come out, we no longer treat them as human beings. They are lesser citizens when they come out of prison, even though they've served our time. It is time for us to change that. It's a top-down Republican model that we dehumanize people and then we can fear them because they're bad and then we don't have to do anything to stop that continuation of the oppression that's going on. So that's what Guard the Vote is about. Uh, I look forward to all of you helping in this really important mission that we're on. And, and we are going to be doing canvases all over the county tomorrow. I'm going to be down in New Paltz. If anybody would like to come down and walk and canvas, I met two people in my canvas last week who had not registered to vote, who after talking with them, I want to register, I want to vote for you. That's what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you to all of these wonderful people who came and gave their time to inspire us today. Yeah. 
So here's our chant. Uh, well, I, I do want to say, yeah, activism. But civics is an action. It's, it's a thought, it's an intention, but it's an action. And only if we act, which means if we canvass, if we make phone calls, write letters, protest, do all these things that we do, talk to as many people as possible, and most importantly, the most effective way is to canvass. It's the most effective way. Man, if you're an, a, a, an activist or, or a town committee member trying to get people to canvass, it's not easy. That's why I'm going on and on. Canvassing people, canvassing, <laughs> door to door. It's actually fun once you do it. It's fun to meet your neighbors and talk to them. So we need your help. Sign up uh, for Indivisible. We've got other things happening that we want to tell you about. And uh, here's our chant before we have um, uh, Tin Horn Uprising uh, play us out. So it's guard the vote, guard the vote, guard the vote. That's all she wrote. Put your life into it. Ready? Guard the vote, guard the vote, guard the vote. That's all she wrote. Guard the vote, guard the vote. Guard the vote, that's all she wrote. Guard the vote, put your signs out to the street. Guard the vote, that's all she wrote. Guard the vote, guard the vote. Guard the vote, that's all she wrote. Guard the vote, guard the vote. Guard the vote, that's all she wrote. Guard the vote, guard the vote.